Hello friends, welcome to the new episode of Online Chalkboard. From today onwards, we would be starting with class 10 CBSC portions. And I would be dealing with chapter 1 real numbers in this video. And rest of the chapters would be updated regularly in our channel. So that you get the notifications, please do subscribe to our channel and press the notification button. I assure you that these videos is going to be helpful to pass your class 10 with a highest grade. And this is going to be helpful for you as well as your friends. So do share this to your friends. Let's start with our today's class. Chapter 1, Real Numbers. You would be very familiar with this word, real numbers, as you have dealt with this in class 9. You remember what are the different types of numbers that we have learned yet? Okay, I'll draw a number line for you. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Then minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, etc. Suppose I just ask you to consider these numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm writing it as n equals set 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. This is called natural numbers. Along with this, if I am including this 0, then it becomes whole numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. This becomes whole numbers. Suppose if I am taking all these negative numbers also, what are they called? Yes. Integers. Negative etc. Minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. They are called integers. Uh, and what about fractions? They are called rational numbers. Numbers between uh, 0 and 1, 2 and 3, which have the form P by Q. P by Q, such that Q not equal to 0, where P, comma Q belongs to set of all integers. I will give you a few examples like um, minus 1 by 3, 1 by 2, 0, 1 by 2, 1 by 3, etc. There are infinite many uh, rational numbers. They are called rational numbers. And uh, what about the numbers that we have not yet said? Yes, irrational numbers, which cannot be expressed in the form P by Q. Or Q complement, to name a few, root 2, root 3, etc. Irrational numbers. What is it peculiarity? They have got non-terminating and non-recurring decimal expansion. Whereas for rational numbers, they have got terminating decimal expansion or if they are not terminating, they would be having a repeating decimal expansion. Uh, this is how we uh, differentiate between a rational and a irrational number. So, our question is what is a real number? Set of all these numbers, natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, etc. as well as the irrational numbers, all combined together we get the real numbers. You just see all whole numbers, all natural numbers are actually whole numbers. And whole, na uh, whole numbers are actually integers. And we see whole, whole integers, they all can be expressed in the form P by Q. Minus 4 can be written as minus 4 by 1, minus 3 can be written as minus 3 by 1, etc. So you understand that every integer is also a rational number. So there are just two types of uh, numbers that is rational and irrational. Okay, Com combination of these two together is called real numbers. This is what we have learned in previous class. So from in this chapter, we would be discussing about Euclid's division algorithm as well as fundamental theorem of arithmetic and then how to prove that these numbers are irrational. Before we get into Euclid's division algorithm, let's understand what's Euclid's division lemma. This name would be confusing for you, means you may find it difficult, a big name. Just think about it, let's think it simply, it's actually very simple. Suppose you are asked to divide 10 by 3, how do you do? This 10 divided by 3, 3's are 10, 
9 remainder 1. So I can actually write 10 is equal to 3 into 3 plus 1. Okay, this one example. Now let's take another example. Suppose you are asked to divide 11 by 2. You will write 11 divided by 2. 2 fives are 10. Do you get the remainder 1? I can write 11 like this. 11 is equal to 2 into 5 plus 1 which is the remainder. This is just exactly what Euclid's division lemma says. It is given, it's given uh, in page number page number 3 theorem 1.1 Euclid's division lemma given positive integers a and b there exist integers q and r satisfying a is equal to bq plus r where r is less than b and greater than or equal to 0. Euclid division lemma says that for any two integers a and b suppose a and b are two integers just like we took 10 and 3 a and b are two integers there would exist two more integers q and r. What is its peculiarity? That means we can write them as a is equal to bq plus r such that this r is greater than 0 and less than b. Greater than or equal to 0 and less than b. You just see this example. You see we took two integers 10 and 3 and the quotient here was 3. So we wrote a this is b quotient is 3 and we got the remainder is 1. Uh, which is actually less than this b. This 1 is less than 3. Here also if you see a is 11, b is 2, q is the quotient, 1 is r that is remainder is less than uh, this b that is 1 is less than 2 and also greater than or equal to 0. So this is exactly what Euclid division lemma says. We we'll would be using this uh, to understand what is Euclid division algorithm. It has got applications of finding HCF of numbers. So let's see how it works. Euclid's division algorithm is actually used to find HCF of two numbers and the steps given are actually simple. Okay, let's see how we can find the HCF of two numbers using Euclid's division algorithm which is which actually follows Euclid's division lemma. You suppose we have two numbers C and D. You need to find the HCF of these two numbers. So there would be there would exist q and r such that c is equal to dq plus r from division lemma where uh, 0 is less than or equal to r less than d. Suppose this r is equal to 0. If r is equal to 0 then we say that the highest common factor of c and d is d because r is equal to 0. Suppose r is not equal to 0, what will we do? If r is not equal to 0, then we will again apply the Euclid's division lemma, applying Euclid's division lemma on d and r. And we will get d is equal to some q1 plus r1 that q1 is uh, there exist other integers q1 and r1 such that d is equal to r uh, rq1 plus r1 where this r1 is less than r greater than or equal to 0. If r is equal to 0 then we say r is the uh, highest common factor of c and d. If r is not equal to 0 we will continue this process for r and r1 and we will continue this till we get a 0 and we will say the last number uh, whichever for whichever is we are getting the remainder as 0 that is the highest common factor of c and d. Let us look into an example to make this more clear. Let us look into example 1 of your textbook. Use Euclid's algorithm to find the HCF of 4052 and 12576. To apply the HCF here you must consider a to be the greater number. Okay, so you will take a is equal to bq plus r. So you will take uh, 12576 which is greater than uh, this 4052. So we will consider 12576 as a. 12576 
that is equal to 452 Q plus R. You need to find the quotient and remainder. Just divide. 1,576, 4,052, 3 is a 1, 2, 1, 5, 6, 420. So you got, uh, instead of Q, you can write 4,052 into 3 plus 420, which is actually less than 4,052. So uh, this first case, and you see that 4,000. 20 is not equal to 0. So, you will have to again apply the division algorithm for these two numbers. And I write 4052 is equal to 420 into Q plus R. New Q1 plus R1 because both would be different. 4052 divided by 420 that is equal to 420 instead of the quotient we write 9 plus 272. Here also we got remainder not equal to 0. So we have to continue this again with these two numbers. 420 is equal to, we will have to divide 420 by 272 and find the quotient and remainder. Similarly just we did into 1 plus 148 after doing the division. Here also it is not same, we will continue again. 272 is equal to 148 into 1 plus 124, again we will continue this. So now it is 148 equals 124 into 1 plus 24. This is also a non-zero number. So we will do the division algorithm again. 124 equals 24 into 5 plus 4. Again non-zero number. So 24 equals 4 into 6 plus 0. Here you see we got the remainder as 0. So the HCF of those two numbers would be the last non-zero remainder that is 4. So HCF of four thousand fifty two comma one two five seven six equals 4. This is how we find HCF using division lemma that is Euclid division algorithm. Now let us move on to the next example. Okay. Example 2, page number five, uh, 6. Example 2, show that every positive even integer is of the form 2q and that every positive odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1. We need to show, to show every positive even integer is of the form 2q and every positive odd integer is of the form 2q plus 1. This is what we need to prove. Let a and b be two integers and suppose b is equal to 2. Then we can write a is equal to bq plus r that is actually the division lemma. So 2q plus r where r is less than or equal to uh, greater than or equal to 0 and less than 2. That means r can be this implies r can be either 0 or any number less than 2 is 1. This is also an integer r should also be an integer this uh, q and r are all integers. So there are two possibilities for a a is equal to 2q or a is equal to instead of 0 2q plus 1. So, he, A is a positive integer. Any, uh, let A and B are any positive integer. Suppose, let A and B positive integer. Suppose, B is equal to 2 and A is equal to 2K and A is equal to 2Q plus 1. You see, this is actually the form of even numbers. Right? Even numbers. Even numbers are the multiples of 2. And the other rest of the numbers are odd numbers. So, this is the form for odd numbers. So, we proved that every positive integer which is even can be written as 2q and every positive integer which, which is odd can be written as 2q plus 1. Example 3, this is also similar to example 2. It says, shows that, show that any positive odd integer is of the form 4q plus 1 
or 4 cube plus 3 where q is some integer. Example 3 to show any positive integer, any positive odd integers of the form to show any positive odd integer is of the form 4 cube plus 1 or 4 cube plus 3. For this we will take let a be any positive odd integer, any positive odd integer with b is equal to 4. We apply the division algorithm for a and b, a is equal to 4q plus r where r is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 4. So the possible values of r are, this implies r is equal to any number less than 4 and greater than 0 is 0, 1, 2 and 3. These are the possible 4 values of r. So the possible 4 values of a would be, this implies a is equal to when r is equal to 0, 4q plus 0, then a is equal to 4q plus 1, a is equal to 4q plus 2 and a is equal to 4q plus 3. Again, but or. So according to r changes, you will get 4 different values. This 4q plus 0 is actually 4q. So 4q, 4q plus 1, 4q plus 2, 4q plus 3. So among these, you see this is even, this is 4 into any number which is a multiple of 4 is actually even and this is also even because this is a multiple of 4 plus 2 which is also an even number. Sum of two even number is also even. So these two numbers, these are odd. Even number plus an odd number would be odd. Even number plus an odd number will also be odd. So we understood any positive odd integer can be written in the form 4q plus 1 and 4q plus 3 or 4q plus 3. This is what example 3 says. Now let's move on to example 4 which is one of application question of how to find HCF. A sweet seller has 420 kaju burfis and 130 badam burfis. She wants to stack them in such a way that each stack has the same number and they take up the least area of the tray. What is the number of that can be placed in each stack for this purpose? Okay, this question asks you that the person has two sets of burfis. One has 420 kajus burfis and the other has 130 uh, badam burfis. And this person has to stack them in such a way uh, that each stack has equal number of burfis. Of course, we would be uh, stacking kaju burfis and badam burfis differently but it shouldn't be like 420 badam burfis will be forming a huge mountain and this uh, small one would be forming a smaller bar. Look, so that it looks beautiful. The person says that these kaju burfis and badam burfis should be stacked such that each has same number of burfis. Suppose here 420 kaju burfis and 130 badam burfis. So uh, the person has to divide it into equal stacks. Suppose 420 is divided into uh, let's say B number. Also 130 should also have a stack which contains B numbers of burfis. Okay. That means we must find a B which is common to both which divides them. That is and which gives the least number of stacks. That is actually the highest common factor of 130. B would be dividing 420 as well as B would be dividing 130. And also that would be the highest, greatest number that would be dividing these both number. That is highest common factor. Only then we will get the number of stacks to be least. So you see, you have to find the highest common factor. This is how we understood. We had to find out the HCF. We will use the division algorithm here that. 420 is equal to 130 into Q plus R. You need to find the Q and R. 420 divided by 130. So you got 130 into 3 plus 30 
Now R is not non-zero, so we'll do the Levitian algorithm again. 130 will come here, 30, 30 into 4 plus 10. Here also R is non-zero, we'll do the division algorithm again for this 30 and 10, 30, 10 into 3 plus 0. We got remainder as 0. So the last non-zero remainder is the HCF of these two numbers. How? You see, uh, 10 is the HCF of 10 and 30. And that similarly, 10 is the HCF of 130 and 30. 10 is the HCF of 420 and 130. HCF of 10 and 30 will be equal to HCF of 130 and 30 as well as HCF of 420 and 130 is also that is equal to 10. So the person we got the value of B to be 10. Therefore each stack will have 10 number of burfees and so the Kaju burfees would be forming 42 stacks and uh, this Badam burfees would be forming 13 stacks with 10 burfees each. So uh, each burfee would be coming, uh, each stack would be containing equal number of burfees like this. So friends, we wind up with today's section. We completed our examples. We are dealing with uh, the exercise in the next coming up video. Today we learned about Euclid's lemma as well as Euclid's division algorithm, how it is used to find the HCF and the daily life examples. Uh, so I hope this video was very useful for you. If you like this video, do support us and like our video and also share this to your friends. Stay tuned till the next video. Thank you.